Hello, my name is Tim Eskew. Uh, I have a company called Ensemble Management Consulting, and we're based in Tempe, Arizona. And I have one full-time partner and uh, a few affiliate consultants. And um, we do a variety of things, all associated with uh, systemic performance improvement. Uh, but um, what we've been focused on primarily is project management, and what we try to do is help high-stakes project teams do what they say they're going to do. We don't just try to do that, we do it every time. Uh, my first exposure to HPT was, uh, I'd have to say, 1983, formally. I came to a, I went to a local chapter meeting, uh, and we were actually hosting it at Intel, where I had just started working. So I was you know, told as part of this department, uh, you will come to the ISPI meeting, uh, you will participate, we're going to make a presentation. Um, but that was not my first exposure to uh, HPT. Um, I had, uh, as a graduate student, I had done a uh, research project that resulted in a paper uh, doing a survey of task, an task analysis methods. And um, of all the different, we probably surveyed, um, looked at hundreds of papers on task analysis. Um, we were looking for step-by-step -step methodologies so that we could compare them. And of all of those, um, of the tens of task analysis methodologies that we found step-by-step, -step, the one that stuck out for me was by this guy named Tom Gilbert. And the difference between Tom's and everybody else's was he said, before you ever think or talk about the tasks and the activities, get very clear about what we're trying to accomplish here. What are the accomplishments? What are the outcomes? And that, that made a big impact on me, and I think that's a big part of what makes us a uh, difference coming from a human performance perspective. Um, a lot of things have, uh, you know, so I've been here since 1983, uh, I think very active, first at the chapter level and then getting involved at the international level. I've been a board member uh, for one term and found that rewarding. Um, there have been many influences on why I stay here. Um, I'm, you know, there's all the great literature, all the great tools, but um, if, if your biggest influence at ISPI is not the people that you have access to, then you haven't cried hard enough to get access to the people. Because um, what I found was it was very easy for me to approach uh, Tom Gilbert after I had read about him and Gary Rumler and Don Toasty, and I'll stop naming names because I don't want to leave out um, so many more people that have influenced me, Bill Daniels, I have to say. Uh, but um, uh, it's, it's so easy, um, and I have been um, positively reinforced so many times by simply going up to somebody that I was really curious about their work. And sometimes it's a big name and sometimes it's not. And asking them, you know, the questions that I'm curious about, uh, oftentimes leading to a, you know, a very long relationship, um, rewarding relationship where we're sharing um, the things that we're passionate about. So um, clearly the biggest influence on me has been that opportunity to get access to other people that are passionate about the same things that I'm passionate about. An HPT term that I would define, I guess I will select the term planning because I, I think we've got a little bit different uh, take on what planning is about. Um, we talk about planning as um, the people that are closest to the work testing and sharing their assumptions about how we're going to get from here to there on a project, for example. Um, and so it's about a group of people moving together towards a shared set of assumptions. Um, and we have found that to be a very helpful way of thinking about planning to ensure that you get a deliverables-based plan that's based on commitments from individuals to individuals, which seems to make a big difference in the way those projects get executed. Um, so we've been um, including in our project management approach the notion of um, commitment for many years. I learned through some um, very hands-on lessons that the way expectations get set um, makes a big difference and whether people actually sign up and roll and commit to those expectations makes a big difference. And um, this concept of, of commitment has continued to fascinate me because it's, it's difficult to measure. We found a way to operationally define it and measure it, but what we were doing is sort of making it an objective thing, and there's a subjective aspect of commitment. Um, and so the, the new thing that I'm interested in is 
how do we create a little bit better balance between um, the objective aspects of understanding an organization that are, that are publicly measurable and we can know that we're impacting them and the subjective side, things like purpose and attitudes and beliefs that 20 years ago I would have said, don't worry about them, there's nothing you can do about them. Um, I've come convinced that uh, there is something that can be done about them and if you ignore them, it is to your peril. So that's, that's an area of continuous study for me. And uh, a, a tool that I found to be useful for exploring that is the, uh, the integral model, which is a, maybe a broader world view than our um, HPT systems view of organizations. It ensures that you don't leave out the subjective side. So thank you. <laughs>